Welcome to Egypt. All right, so first of all, we have here in this area, there is two separate tickets. One ticket for the area, that is mandatory, we have to pay for it. And there is an extra ticket to enter the pyramid by itself, the Great Pyramid. And it costs 900 Egyptian pounds per person. That decide we need to pay for the area ticket, which is 540 Egyptian pounds for one person. But let me tell you what is inside the pyramid, so you can decide and you take the decision from now, because you gotta pay the ticket from here, because if we enter, you cannot buy the ticket. Anymore. So at the entrance of the pyramid, it looks like a passage, and then there is a vertical way known as the Grand Valley. But during that vertical way, you have to be like in bending position, because the tunnel is really tight. So you gotta be in bending position, about 100 meters in deep, until you reach the chamber. The chamber basically it's made by red granite, but there is no writing on the wall. It's a blank wall, and there is a small sarcophagus. It's almost broken, but there is no mummy inside. It's empty. That's all in it's just the a chamber. passage. It, yeah. But, uh, you want to go? No. 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 Okay. So we just pay for the area. Again, you see? Oh, that's What is your name? Daniel. Daniel? Alright, and here is your ticket. Thank you. Have a bag. Just to put your bag on the X-ray machine. Okay. Just to put your bag on the X-ray machine. Anyone try to sell you items that's the vendors, just ignore them, don't touch their items because if you touch their items, they're gonna scam you. Alright? Also, if someone offers for you to ride a camel or horses, ignore that as well. In case if you are interested to have a ride on a camel, let me know so I can tell you which is the best bar or the best place you can find the uh, camel riding with a decent price so you don't get scammed. Alright? In this area, we have nine pyramids in total. People think there are only three pyramids, but actually, if we are going to talk about pyramid shape, so we have nine pyramids in total, the three big pyramids for the pharaohs, and there is a six, six little pyramids for the queens. The six little pyramids for the queens built as an honor to their queens, but there is no chamber inside. So where are the, the queens buried? There is a place, they are buried at the uh, Luxor city. There is a city, house of Cairo, known as Luxor. I hope one day if you came again to Egypt, Make it at least in like one week so you can visit Luxor yeah, and sure. so on. There is much history in the South Bar. We call it Upper Egypt. Alright, starting from this point, I can say welcome to Giza Plateau. Giza, that is the name of the city that around us here. And Plateau, we are on high land. And in this area, as I mentioned earlier, we have nine pyramids in total. The three big pyramids for the pharaohs and six little pyramids for the queens. I'm starting first by the Great Pyramid. We call it the Great Pyramid because it was one of the seven wonders in the ancient world. But now it's not the tallest anymore because we got uh, evil tower in Paris, uh, Burj Khalifa, Khalifa. etc. Yeah, so the pyramid is not the tallest anymore. Okay. So that is the reason they used to call it the Great Pyramid. And that pyramid belongs to a pharaoh, his name is Khufu, also known as Cheops. Which name is better for you to use? Uh, Khufu. Khufu, all right. Kufu, not Fufu. Fufu is my dog Fufu, name. Fufu, Fufu is good too. Okay. Daniel. So, Kufu, that is the pharaoh, and he's the creator of the fourth dynasty. Dynasty means like a family. And the total families we had in ancient Egyptian time are 30 families, which is 30 dynasties. Those 30 dynasties divided into three kingdoms, all the kingdom, middle kingdom, and the new kingdom. New kingdom. So the whole area here belongs to the old kingdom during the fourth dynasty, the fourth family. So the area here considered as a cemetery, considered as a tomb or necropolis for the fourth family, starting by the father, which is Kofi. And he made that pyramid to be like a tomb to preserve his body in there because the ancient Egyptian people believed in the afterlife, which means if someone passed away, he will have the chance to live again in the afterlife. And that is the reason they made the mummification to keep the body preserved so they can use it after life again also they used to uh, bury the items he were using during the time mm -hmm. like the stuff he were their using in favorite the stuff so he can use it in the afterlife as well in the same chamber with her okay. but there is nothing inside the pyramid it's empty because as you can see the pyramid is built on a high plateau and you can see it from far away so imagine how many people went inside the pyramid a lot of them tomb, ra tomb raiders during the invasion people so they stole everything inside. So the pyramid literally it's empty. Do you know and the height of this? 
Sorry? How much is the height? The height is starting from the base to the top. Originally, it was 146 meters. But now it's 136 meters. It was about 10 meters. Why? Because Why? if you look at the top part of the pyramid, it's supposed to have the cab stone. The cab stone is a part that show the pyramid is complete. But that cab stone got raised because of the roof on the stones. That's why the pyramid lost about 10 meters. People think that the top part, which is the capstone, made by gold. So someone already climbed all the way up and he took that gold to make money. But actually the entire pyramid made by limestone. The top part wasn't gold. That, that is just like a Photoshop picture. If you have seen picture like that, it's just a Photoshop, but it's not true. So the entire pyramid made by limestone. Those stones we are looking at, known as limestones. And the limestones, they used to grab it from Sinai which is like a big island. It's at the border between Egypt and the uh, Middle East, which is like uh, Israel, Saudi Arabia, like that. So Sinai is a big place over there. So they used to grab the limestone from there. What about the chamber? The chamber made by red granite. Red granite was very important for ancient Egyptian people more than gold in that time. Because red granite, it's rare. It's not easy to find it. But gold was everywhere in that time. So for the ancient Egyptian people, gold was nothing but ray granite that was the expensive material so they made the chamber of the great pyramid made by ray to show us that the, that the chamber is the most important part that is the place where the pharaoh going to have the rest of life in there i have a question for you why they made the pyramid or the tomb like a pyramid why that shape specifically why the structure no, there is another reason. Okay, to make it easy for you, it's related to the God. But oh, which God? God? Mm -hmm. Which God? Pharaoh? Yeah. The Pharaoh, that is the like the king. King. Yeah. The God of death. The God of death, that is Anubis. No, we are talking about God, which is the sun disk. The sun disk, that was a God, his name is Amura. Amura was the God like for the afterlife. So the ancient Egyptian people believe if they made the tomb like a pyramid, from the angles, from the, each side looks like stairs. stairs yes. So they believe if they put the body of the Pharaoh inside the pyramid, with the second day with the sun rising, his soul gonna climb to the top of the pyramid during the sunrise, and Amura gonna take his soul and give him the afterlife. So that is the reason they made that pyramid Steps. or that tomb looks like a pyramid, so it can fit or can meet the sun god. Limestone. This block can be like five ten. Watch out. That block can be like five ten. So, yeah. So can you imagine how the ancient Egyptian people moved just that block? It's not like one man or two men. It used no. more than hundred men to build one block. Besides animals, animals such as ox, so they can easily pull the block. And as you can see, they start using the bigger block on the bottom. And again, and then getting smaller, smaller to make the shape of the pyramid, yes. as you can see. So one. for that pyramid, just two million and three hundred thousand blocks of limestone. That how is the funeral temple of the old kingdom looks like? I know you haven't been in Luxor yet. In Luxor, the temples over there much bigger. The pillars are huge fancy there is like hieroglyphics around the pillar so the only hieroglyphics we have it here on the wall you can see here on the wall that is the ancient Egyptian language and since it's written on the wall we call it hieroglyphic because hieroglyphic that is the name of the form it's not the name of the language the language itself is the ancient Egyptian language and it got two different fonts the hieroglyphic and the demotic so the demotic used on the paper such as papyrus have you heard about that paper so what is papyrus do you have any clue so papyrus, it's a plant, only grow on the bank of the Nile River in Delta and the ancient Egyptian people used to grab those plants or reeds and they make it like a paper so they can use it for writing as well beside the walls or the temple. Okay. So here we call it hieroglyphic and if you saw writing on the paper, we call it demon. So that is the difference between the two forms. The hieroglyphic, you can read it in three different sides, from right to left, left to right, and up to down, based on two things. The first thing, you look at the figures, you see the figures facing that way, so that means you're going to start reading from the right side. The second thing, there is like a line here, you see that line? So it's a line, the text. 
so that means you're gonna read from the top right so after you finish that bar you're gonna start with the second bar etc okay. you see that symbol as well that known as cartouche Cartouche. The cartouche dedicated to have the name of the king written inside there. So whenever you see that symbol, you will figure out the name of the king. So after you translate the hieroglyphic words inside there, wow. it gives you the name of the king. So that temple belongs to Khufu, the builder of the Great Pyramid, because that is his funeral temple. Here, they used to do the ceremony after they do the mummification. And by the way, the mummification, to make it, you have, it takes 70 days. And to make it, you have to take off the internal organs from the body, such as intestines, liver, kidney, and the brain. Look. How do you to take off the brain without making any damage in skull? Through the nose. They put a hook into the nose oh, to suck or pull out the God. brain and then they put each part in jars known as four jars, known as the canopic jars. These canopic jars or four jars stored in a box has the shape of the jackal, the black jackal, which is Anubis, the god of the underground and the god of the mummification. So Anubis is the god he do the mummification and also he do the judgment day. Judgment, judgment day he I bring like that. a scale it has like a, the heart and the feather mm -hmm. and it says if the heart is heavier than the feather so that means he's a bad person so there is an animal or monster known as Mahmoud he's gonna eat that heart but if his heart is lighter than the feather so that means he has pure heart so uh, Anubis he's gonna take his heart back to his body to do the mummification and give him the afterlife later on by Amun Ra so oh my god the body, after taking the internal organs out say that again when they take all the internal organs out mm -hmm. do they fill something inside no they they leave it like that they, ju they just take the internal organs they put it in jars and then they, during the mummification procedure they put some material like salt and nitrone and then they Inside wrap the mummy yeah salt. they wrap the mummy using linen mm -hmm. to become like a mummified body yeah salt is logic yes this is the second pyramid and as you can notice we are going a little bit higher yeah. Because the pharaoh here of the second pyramid, he wanted to make his pyramid looks higher and bigger than his father. But in that time, it would be disrespect. So he built on his pyramid on a higher plateau by 10 meters to give an illusion that his pyramid looks higher than his father. Okay? But the weird thing about his pyramid, it consists of more stones. Yeah. The second pyramid has 3 million blocks of limestone. But the great pyramid, it has 2 million and 300,000 blocks of limestone. So why the second pyramid has more stones? Because the stones he use it here much smaller than the Great Pyramid. So that's why the more stones. Okay. Go because it's not clear to see the panoramic view. But in this case, I will take you nearby the pyramid to be close enough to the pyramid. To go from here and after that to go to the smallest pyramid and come back again in a second. Right. See you after 15 minutes.
This is the Great Pyramid of Giza. 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 Not Pisa. Let's go a little bit in front so you can see the head of the Sphinx and we can make it a little bit faster because of the blue sky. Alright, so that is the Sphinx. The Sphinx is a mythical creature with a body of a lion and head of a human. The ancient Egyptian people, they made that creature to be like a guardian, to protect the area. If you remember, I told you the area here used for the fourth dynasty and they consider it like a cemetery, like a necropolis. So that is like a guardian. And his name is not Sphinx, he's a pharaoh. If you look at his head, He's wearing the head nemesis dress and he had a false beard. Now the false beard stored it in the British Museum. Have you been in the British in the UK no. before? Alright, one day if you go to the British Museum, you're gonna see the false beard of the Sphinx. But why the false beard of the Sphinx in the British Museum? That because the English expedition when they were here in 1800, they found the false beard landing, landing on the sand. In that time, Sphinx was covered by sand until the shoulders. And the false beard was already falling down on the sand. So the soldier, when they've been here, they took this the false beard as a memory and they stored it with them in the uh, uh, the uh, the movie to the British, and it's stored now in the British Museum. We try to bring it back. There is in like a, ne a negotiation is still ongoing, and I hope they're gonna bring it back again. But in the good side. They bring tourism to us because when yeah. people go and visit British Museum and they see the false beard of the Sphinx, they will come to Egypt to they see the real Sphinx. They want to witness this. Yeah. Also, yeah. there is a stories about his nose that Napoleon Bonaparte, the French short boy, they blame him that he broke the nose of the Sphinx. But actually, the nose of the Sphinx was already broken before Napoleon Bonaparte comes to Egypt. In 1300, there was like a sultan, like a Muslim ruler. He found the business around here. They make an offering to the Sphinx, considering the Sphinx as a god. So that sultan, he came and he broke the nose of the Sphinx to show for them he's just a statue, he's not a god. So that's why the nose of the Sphinx looks broken like that. So it's not Napoleon. Napoleon is innocent, but broken the nose of the Sphinx. <laughs> but the word Sphinx, is a word given by the Greeks just to, to describe the creature. So whenever you say Sphinx, that means body of lion and head of human. But what is the real name body behind the lion? body of a lion? Yeah, and head of, head of human. But what is the real name of that statue here? We don't know yet. We didn't find any evidence or even papyrus plan or papyrus paper to give us more details about the Sphinx. But all we know is the word Sphinx that given by the Greeks after Alexander the Great came to Egypt. Okay. Wait.